Hi, everybody. It is Kathy, and I love to be selling. Come on in, everybody. Oh, it is so good, good, good to see you all. Um, let me know that you can hear me. Say hi. Let me know how everything is, and we will get right to work and get going. And I have titled this video, I know you're going to enjoy this one, Your Sales May Be Dead Because of This. <laughs> I figure let's get going, okay? So hang on just a second and let me make sure that everything is going okay. And we will get right to it. Love these tech adjustments. Okay, good, good, good. How is everybody? So let me see how we are. Let me just check and make sure everything's okay. It's just me, I am the tech person and we will get right to it. Um, and this actually happened, I was shopping on eBay and I saw this and I was like, oh my goodness. Um, and I'll show you some things about this um, that I want to show. I'm not going to say what seller it is that I spotted on this, but I've seen other people do it too. But talk about a sales killer. I mean, this seller has not had sales from what I can see for over 30 days. So hang on just a second and we will get to it. And I will show you what I'm, I will speak to what I'm talking about. Um, but hang on. Let's make sure all is well. And we will go, go, go. Excuse me for the brief tech check. I want to make sure. Oh, good. Everything's good. Okay. Yay. How are you? So let me just do this so we don't have volume. And I want to make sure everything is okay. Great. Oh, good, good, good. So you can hear me. Hi, Joyce. How are you? And Joan and Lori and Sharon, Natalie, Debbie, Vicki. Good. How is everybody? How are you? How are you? How are you? Um, it was sort of chilly here today. <laughs> it was like, much colder than I thought it was warmer a couple of weeks ago, but still, yay, spring is here. And I am glad, glad, glad. And you know what? You just layer up and put something warm on. Um, so this is what I wanted to talk to you about is, um, whoops, <laughs> sort of like wobbling everything. Um, sales can slow down for a lot of reasons. Um, sometimes it's, um, this actually just happened to be on one of my items, um, something that usually sells pretty well and all of a sudden it like skidded to a stop. And I'm like, hmm, what's going on? And I went in and sure enough, there were a couple people with similar items um, that were, were just under me. Um, and as soon as I dropped my price a little bit, bam, my sales started to pick up again. So definitely if you're selling something that's more of a commodity, I mean, I'm gonna pick something obvious like cell phone cases or batteries, something where you know you're gonna have a lot of competition, but even eBay shirts. Um, if you sort of have consistent sales on an item and all of a sudden it slows down, it can be what is called ebb and flow of e-commerce. Um, and my for instance on that is, you know, when you go into a store, this happens in New York a lot, you know, you'll go in and there aren't that many people there. You know, you'll be in the drugstore, you're in the supermarket, and for whatever reason, you know, there's just not a lot of people. It's not super, super busy. And then, you know, as you're checking out or as you're leaving, literally the floor traffic has doubled. Like all of a sudden there's lines at all the registers and they're not running a sale and there's nobody outside um, you know, handing out samples to drive people in. It's not lunchtime or supper time or a time that might be busy. It's just ebb and flow. All of a sudden, there's just more people shopping in the store. And that's the way it is. It's the same thing on the internet. You know, at one moment, for whatever reason, your item just isn't that popular. There aren't that many searches for it. And then all of a sudden, the next day there are, or the next week there are, or the next month there are. So just know there is ebb and flow. Um, but again, if it is something that sells pretty regularly for you or a category that sells really regularly for you, the first thing I always do is go in and check prices um, because somebody can come in and list and I, they weren't there you know, when I was doing my listing, but now sure enough, all of a sudden, and it can even happen on things that are highly collectible. You swear you're the only one or one of only a handful. And for whatever reason, all of a sudden, another six sellers have come up with it. You know, so you want to keep an eye on things like that. But this is a real sales killer. Um, and I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read this to you and you tell me what you think. So I was actually shopping and I came across this listing and this seller has over hundred feedback. Okay, and 100% 100 positive feedback. So to give them credit, yay. They say what the item is, they give the size. And then right after the size, before the measurements, they say, please make sure you go through all the pictures to verify item size and fabric content if available with all the listings I make. Sometimes I make a mistake in typing and item detail. Also, please note that tag size may not be true to size on all items. Some items may run larger or smaller. So always refer to, to measurements below. Colors may vary depending on camera monitor settings. 
Now, the reason this is not good to put so close to the top of the listing is um, the person has the brand name, which she has in a colored font, and that's not recommended in case you don't know. You do want to just stick to black, and then they have the size, and then they have the disclaimer about going through the pictures. My best understanding is that when eBay feeds our listings to Google, it's about your first 200 to 250 characters in your description are the most important as far as information that is fed to Google. In fact, Brian Burke, who's the community manager for eBay, was at my meetup here in New York, I think it was last month, and he mentioned that too. So what the seller is doing is right at the top of their listing, they're doing a disclaimer about their item. And this disclaimer information is some of the information that is gonna be fed to Google. That's not what you want. You want what the item is, you want the color, you want the size, you want, depending on what you're selling, you know, the brand measurements, um, the model number, you don't want a disclaimer about your listing to Google, okay? Then the seller has the measurements, which is good. That's a good thing to do. And then after that, most of the, inf you may, bleh, most of the information you may need is in the pictures, material washing instructions, size, et cetera. Again, that's Fine, if that's what you're doing, it's also a good idea to put it in your description. If you think the washing um, is important to your buyer, that, that there's a tag on the item that says machine wash is recommended or dry clean only, if that's something you think is gonna be important to your shoppers, then you should include. Some people do only shop for things that are machine washable, other people don't mind. Some people are very conscious about fabric content because of other allergies, people don't mind. So the seller has started with brand size, then a disclaimer about you should go through their pictures, measurements, which is good, and then tells me that information I need is in the pictures. After that, they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight paragraphs of information and a third of it is in blue font, and some of it is in caps. Now, my thing about descriptions is short and sweet. Uh, people basically don't read, <laughs> so you really wanna just stick to the important information. Again, brand, color, size, measurements, fabric content. What this seller has chosen to do is very, very long disclaimer and business policies, okay? And again, seller does have 100% feedback, but I'm gonna tell you some things about them in just a second. So this is just a little bit of what the seller has put in their listing, and this is in every listing. General information, please read carefully. In caps, please make sure to go through all the pictures to verify item size and fabric content if available. With all the listings I make, sometimes I make a mistake in typing in item details, which they said before, but now they're saying it again. I try my best to describe each item. I thoroughly check each piece for stains, tears, or any defects, but do keep in mind these are pre-owned pieces and may have some gentle wear imperfections. I always check each piece one more time before shipping it off. If I notice a major flaw, I'll send you a message, refund you money, and send a request to cancel transaction. I want you to be happy with your purchase, and I try my best to inspect each item really well, but I'm only human and may miss something. She keeps going, or he keeps going. Most of my items are pre-owned. I don't know the history of the item. They have in caps not been professionally cleaned and may come accompanied with some smells, scents, detergent scents, musty due to storage. This applies to NWT, NWOT items, and this is assuming that a buyer knows what that means, as well as they are stored together with pre-owned items. In colored font, then they have, if you're very sensitive sense of smell or allergies, please be aware before bidding buying, and if this is gonna be an issue, I kindly ask you to not bid buy from me. And then they go on and on and on about this. Then they also say, I don't always wash the clothing. Some items may be wrinkled. It is the buyer's responsibility to wash items prior to wearing. And then they keep going. In order to keep shipping as low as possible, items may be crammed into bubble poly mailer. So please be careful when opening your item. I cannot be accountable for damages. On and on and on. If you need your item by a certain date, ask before buying on and on about that. If you need specific measurements, try to ask as soon as possible. I have a lot of items, so it may take me a while. Okay, payments expected in three days. Then we have some information about when the payment's expected. If there's an issue, contact me before leaving negative feedback. Then all sales are final. 
the seller does not offer uh, returns. No refunds, no returns. So please ask questions before placing the bid. This is now in the sixth paragraph. I am not liable for ill-fitting, shopper's remorse, item not meeting your ex expectations, et cetera. I'm human and do try to list many details and apologize if I overlook something. Please use the Zoom function to help you make your choice. Any problems you may encounter must be communicated to me within 24 hours of item receipt. No exceptions in caps. I may ask for an emailed photo of possible discrepancy problem to document the issue in question. If the item is accepted for returns, buyer is responsible for the return shipping fee and a refund on and on and on. And then she's got notes for international buyers, okay? Now, the reason I am reading all of this to you is you tell me. Now, the, 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 the item was a very good price, which is why it caught my eye. I was like, oh, this looks like a good price. Then I read all that disclaimer. Now, I'm a very experienced eBay shopper. I shop eBay almost daily for one thing or another. I know I could force a return because I, I could say the item is not as described or I would message her and say, you know, but I could claim it was not as described, which is I get it. And with the measurements and I'd say, you know, it's an inch shorter or longer or whatever, which it might be. Even though she says in the disclaimer, this is all approximate, you know, it may not exactly be this way and you can't hold me liable for ill-fitting garments. I mean, I sell clothing. If it doesn't fit, of course I could take a return. I take 30 days returns. You can return anything 30 days. Um, if it's not in the same condition, I call customer service and we, we sort things out, okay? Um, I don't have free returns on most of my clothing. I have buyer pays returns because things, people get it and it doesn't fit. What I'm saying to you is by reading that to you, and I am not ridiculing this seller at all. What I think is very hardworking seller, obviously has had some returns, obviously has had people where they're returning because the item doesn't fit. Um, and so the way that this seller is dealing with that is they don't take returns and they write a very long description. I went to this seller's feedback they have no feedback for 30 days. Now they could have gotten sales without feedback because certainly all of us who sell know that, that basically it's like one out of five, maybe one out of a six leaves feedback. So it is possible the seller got some sales with no feedback, but this seller has no feedback for 30 days. And I'm again, I'm sure this is a good seller. The description to me is a complete turnoff. I would have to really want this item really look at the pictures. But again, you know, this is you can get an item, especially when it's used clothing, and it is half an inch shorter or longer, and it just doesn't fit right. It's too tight. It's too loose. It's just not right. And it's not that you were intending to return the item, but it doesn't fit right, and you want to return it. This seller does charge for shipping, so if they were to do a refund, it would just be for the item price only. But you get my point by reading this? I would not want to shop with this seller. Because from what it sounds like is, for whatever reason, um, this seller would be very, very difficult to deal with should I need any kind of return. And I don't want that. When I'm shopping at eBay, if there's any problem, and, and thankfully, maybe one out of 10 items I need to return for one reason or another. I bought some shirts from my husband about four months ago, and they were size large. I, I think what happened was it, it was size large, but it wasn't large. You know, when you're buying things sometimes at closeouts or thrift shops, the reason they're there is because there's something wrong with them. And it wasn't a large, it, it was like a, a triple X. I mean, it was so big. I mean, as soon as you put it on, it was like huge. So, you know, and as a seller, I run into this where you have the item and it, it doesn't match the size. I mean, you're looking at it and you're going, this is not a large by any stretch of the imagination. So what I do is in the title, I will put what the size is I'll try and find a manufacturer's chart and see what size it is. Otherwise I'll just, you know, you sell enough clothing, you have a pretty good idea of small, medium, large. So I'll size it and say, it's a large, it's a medium. And then in the description, I'll say, it's tagged an extra large or medium, or whatever it is. However, it measures a large and I'll sell it that way. So let me just see how you guys are doing. And, and I, do you see what I mean? And I also, the description reminded me, cause I've been selling on eBay for, I think it's over 18 years now. It reminds me of what I call old school eBay. 
eBay from the 80s. We used a lot of colored fonts and people had very long disclaimers um, in the description and sometimes very anecdotal descriptions about how they found the item. Um, as opposed to now, it's very short and sweet, very mobile friendly, very to the point, measurements, brand, color, um, without long disclaimers. Um, your, your return policy is in the top part of the listing. That's part of the, the eBay format. Um, and again, these long, long, long disclaimers, one, people don't read, they're not mobile friendly because can you imagine on a phone, you'd be scrolling for like 10 minutes to get through with the description. Um, short and sweet is good. Um, and unless now some categories, like if you're selling uh, coins, bullion, you know, things like that, uh, custom goods, I can totally understand um, not taking returns on that kind of thing. But otherwise you want to take returns. I don't want to disagree with you, Kathy and Majors. Oh, hi, Debbie. How are you? Um, that's fine. I'm just telling you that it turns off um, buyers. You really want to have short and sweet descriptions. Um, they're mobile friendly and they help people. It also encourages people to shop with you. I do know some sellers that don't take returns and they say it's fine for them. That's great. But by and large, you're going to get a lot more shoppers uh, by taking returns. Um, because again, they're going to be people that will not shop with you um, because you don't take returns. And the other thing is they can force a return with the claiming item not as described and you don't want to be pushing people into that. So that's it. We got Diana. Hi, everybody. See everybody, how everybody's going. Um, does she really want to sell it? Doesn't she, Deborah? That's what I thought. Catherine Hill, yeah, I agree with you too. And again, I understand the heart. It's clearly, I'm sure she had some difficult shoppers. I mean, listen, we've all had that. <laughs> we've all had shoppers where we go, oh my goodness. Thankfully, they are so so, so few. I mean, 99.999% of my shoppers are great and fabulous. And even when they do, I just had a woman where um, she just, you know, opened a return. She sent it back and she said, I am so sorry. They just don't fit right. I said, that's not a problem. Just return it. Um, I did message her and I said, do you want to exchange? You know, because it's always good to offer exchanges. But these long, long, long descriptions with you know, it's your responsibility and you have to do this and you have to do that really puts buyers off and you're driving them um, to go to another seller. And you don't want that because you want to get the sale. So again, even though this is a great, great, great price um, because of this long, 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 long disclaimer telling me all the things that I have to do and the conditions to buy with her, it's very offsetting. And just to contrast, I want to read um, another seller. And again, I'm just you know, Googling around um, and this seller, you know, nice title with great keywords. Um, this seller is doing fast and free shipping. So if she does take a return or he takes a return, they're gonna be liable for the return shipping. Um, let me see if they're doing free And they are doing free returns. So they're doing free shipping, free returns on clothing. Um, so good for them. This is this seller's description and another used um, item. Now, first of all, they have really good item specifics. So I've got the color, fabric, brand, size type, um, pattern, solid, uh, length that goes to the hips, sleeve length, it's long sleeve, it's machine washable. And I know it's made in Hong Kong and it's a blouse and doesn't have a UPC. And this is the description, Banana Republic Safari Travel Clothing, tagged small, fits larger size, that I like, because it's like, aha, Kathy, get your tape measure out in case I don't know the brand. Woman chambray pin tuck shirt blue. So it's telling me about the detail. Button front, 100% cotton. And then they give me the measurements. And then up at the top, nothing about the return policy, nothing about what I have to do, nothing about I should be reading the pictures. Just to the point, what the item is, me all the details. And up at the top of the listing, I'm seeing the return policy and everything else um, that's a part of the listing. So that's what I wanna encourage you is short and sweet on your descriptions, um, just say exactly what the item is. Um, and again, if you think the fabric content is gonna be important, if you think the um, how to wash it or dry clean it, again, because some people only wanna buy machine washable. Um, and also if something needs to be hand washed. So sometimes giving them the washing um, instructions can be a good thing. And again, the brand, the color, the size, um, dimensions can be very important. You know, what size it is on a mug, is it a six inch, a 10 inch, a four inch? Same thing with glasses. You know, always think about, think like a buyer. 
they're not able to pick the item up and feel it. So we have to do that for them. But really, you don't want to be writing six, seven, eight paragraphs. It's very offsetting. You're going to be driving buyers away. And again, this seller, who clearly is a good seller, over 100% positive feedback with no feedback for 30 days. And let me just look at this other seller. And I didn't even look at if they have comparable amounts of listings up. But this other seller who's doing the free returns has 27 feedback. So again, not a huge seller, but a nice seller, you know, nice amount of sales. That's 27 feedback they've had. Let me just quickly see how many items they have. Up. Hang on a second. So they've got 700 items up, 27 feedback. And the other seller, let me see how many they've got up, has 100 items up, 100 listings. And they have had no feedback for the past 30 days. And the other thing I want to point out, you want to know how much feedback they've had for the past six months? Oops, excuse me, six. Six feedbacks for six months. Now you tell me, don't you think the description's a little offsetting? Don't you think a shorter, sweeter, more positive description, even if you choose not to take returns, which is totally your prerogative and eBay gives you that ability, it's up at the top. I don't need to be beating up my buyers over the head about that. It's up at the top. I can have my description about what it is and the brand and the color and you leave it at that. And that's my encouragement for you. So if you are seeing slow sales, check your prices. And the other thing is look at your description. Is it welcoming? Is it something that a buyer encourages me to shop with you rather than discourages me? Like I go, oh boy, this person's just going to be so difficult to deal with. Um, they may be a lovely seller, but they just sound awfully difficult to deal with. So I think I'm going to pass them by and be shopping with somebody else. And you want to be the kind of seller that a buyer wants to be shopping with you, that you sound like you're going to be the person that they want to deal with because that personal touch that friendly touch, that clear description, and a professional description. This is what it is. This is what the measurements are, the brand, the color. That's what's going to bring you shoppers back again and again and again and keep them happy, which is what we want. And I'm Kathy, and I love to be selling. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. Bye-bye.